Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Yo. Um, Jack was Jack just Maddie's not matching. Three us. up, three down today. We have two guests. We're in our fresh Yukon shirts. Yukon. Make sure you husky. like, subscribe, comment, share. Anything else, Jack? And just watch fight, and enjoy. Fight Connecticut. All right, shut up, Jack. Now, now that he mentions it, it is weird that we're all we all wore them on the same day. But I just it's so it's kind of I mean, coincidence. It is a gigantic football brand. I mean, well, it is. Where did it's you a gigantic. Guys get that? Is there anything better than a Saturday afternoon at the rent? I mean, ask RG3. It's the loudest thing of all time. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think somehow our brains are so synced. You know, like when girls all sync on their period? Yeah, we're synced in we're the brains. We're synced in our brains of wearing, I mean, big brand football gear. Yeah. I like this one. Yeah. Yes. This is. What? They sent it for me. Sent what for you? That's really narcissistic. I got that stuff for you guys, and I don't even have mine yet. <laughs> How do you think the world revolves around you, Jack? No, I don't. But I do know those. those that's my stuff. They messaged me. They sent the box to me. It has my name on it. It has your name on it. Yes. It's your box. It's my box. So, Jack, you had him sent into the office to Brandon's name. They said Brandon's name on it. Yes. It said Brandon Walker, unnecessary roughness. Jack, I will consider giving <laughs> my. I will consider letting you take one item from the box. Just one. Go get this box. A handshaker or a hugger or not? So he's a big. Um, <laughs> Uh, Florida State fan. Florida, stop and playing. See, I just walked. I just, I just sat. Let's down. welcome the podcast. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I was just talking like human beings. I wasn't. Okay, doing fair, a show. fair, fair. No, but fair. Jack does everything Can for content. Talk? He was using his words. All right, y'all ready? Which is tough for him sometimes. Okay. Hello, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness, Barstool's college football podcast. You may notice that we're. Jack's on it today. We're all here, except our uh, our young lady has turned into a gentleman. So uh, we, I don't think we you will can say that. we will reference him in just a second. Uh, it is uh, she'll be back in a minute, but we're going to talk to him first. We're brought to you by High Noon Hard Seltzer. They got the pool pack in front of me: two peach, two kiwi, two guava, two lime. The best drink of the summer: real juice, real vodka for real people like you and me. You love the high noon? The tall boys are tall boys. available. Lemon. You, you all you care about is the tall boys. You just love a tall I, boy. I like a good old tall boy in my hand. Yeah, you know? well, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so it is time for college football season. And what that means, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. we went through uh, the company and we found some interns, some non-interns, and we said, all right, let's identify where all of our fandom is. We had an Alabama kid in here. We had a Penn State kid, a Michigan State kid, a TCU GMU. kid. JMU. Uh, JMU guy who did we have him on the show? Yeah, we had we had Ebo okay, on the show. Well, that was a mistake. Yep. Anyway, we so, had Will Compton come in. Will and Compton for Nebraska. What? Carl for Illinois. Riggs for Kentucky. Riggs for Kentucky was uh, just awful. Awful, the worst. Terrible. So I didn't today think it was that we bad. have for the first time on the show, and this is a uh, Barstool employee who's making the rounds. Mm -hmm. His name is Josh Prey, and he is looking at me like I've got three heads. What have I said wrong? Nothing yet. Josh, welcome just, to the company. I, thank you. And welcome. he is a massive. I am the unofficial ambassador. Of well, now, the, wait a minute. What I'm the, the unofficial because you can't be official what about, ambassador. What about, what about Scooter Magruder? Who? Scooter Magruder. Who is that? Do you, I know Scooter. That's my guy. Okay, I was going to say, do you really not know who that is? <laughs> but okay. Scooter, me and Scooter, yeah. we got a relationship. I'm Will, I'm Will Smith and he's right. Carlton Banks. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh, I like that. That's, right. that's that's actually a pretty good. I mean, I I know Scooter a little bit just through social media, and that's a, a nice little like. And he'll take that. He'll understand. Yeah. What I'm and he'll understand it, but that's also just a massive insult. It's not. <laughs> I, I was taking it as he. I don't think Scooter would tell somebody to go fuck themselves. I wouldn't say the f word, but oh. I definitely question insinuated. real quick. Question real quick before we get to the Florida stuff and we talk about the Florida Gators and all yes. that. Yes. Um, prime Hillary Banks or grown up Ashley? Which one? Which one you picking? Prime Hillary Banks. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. That's not even close. My Are you God. Serious? I mean, and she's, do you know she dude, does. A Ashley grew up to be a beautiful nah, woman. Nah, not she Hillary. Hillary actually does free acting classes for people. Really? I if didn't you want to be that. an actor or an actress, she has. Karen free... Parsons is her name. Dead serious. In yep. California. Brandon all of a sudden wants to be an actor. I do. I love Hillary <laughs> Banks. <laughs> 
Hillary Banks. He's going to be in all those classes I now. Love, I appreciate that question. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that a good question? That was a great question. You know what my theory is about the Fresh Prince? What? You know, when you ask the greatest TV dad of all time, a lot of people say Al Bundy or say this guy or that guy. I think Philip Banks is the greatest TV dad of all time. And I know he was the uncle to Will, but he was also the father to Carlton and Hillary. And I'm going to lean towards Peter Griffin, but that's just me. I'm a family guy. That's just me. <sighs> it's okay. Look at those fire trucks all red. <laughs> 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 really separate the men from the boys. I would um, go for my. Do I get a vote? Of course. Coach Taylor from Friday Night Lights. Oh, you pick Coach Taylor. I love Coach As Taylor. As a TV dad. I don't know. I just really. I'm in kids? love with him. Did he yeah, have kids? he had kids. Relax. Julie, you don't know who Julie is. I don't. I didn't watch the show. I watched the movie and I read That's the book. Oh. I don't. I'm rewatching it right now. That's why I was on the top of my head. She's from Texas. They don't. Yeah, read I got to be from Texas. Shouts yeah. out to Texas. I love Texas. Well, thank you. you guys, home. Yeah, you guys played this year. We don't play Texas this year. You play Texas A&M. That's not Texas. That's He's Texas from A&M. Texas. That's where the state. Texas A&M is, Te- is like saying like, like, it's like the Sandlot Part 2. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, no, no. yeah Texas A&M is oh, like. Oh, no. she's an Aggie. She Who? is an Aggie. Me. This Casey. What? Yeah. An Aggie. Have you met Casey? What? You oh. I'm an Aggie. What is that? It's agriculture. An Aggie. Well, yeah. yeah, y'all. The, the y'all last time, I got it. I'm with you. No, no. See, the I last time you guys. Does he know? The last time you guys played, they they beat you. How about the last like two out of three, three out of four, five out of I six? I don't, I don't know. I, how many times you played? Uh, I think we, I think we played them six times. Okay, now, I didn't know how deep this guy's uh, fandom ran. I didn't know if he was just going to be a poser. I didn't know he was going to be nah, real. I'm and I asked him. I asked him. He has two kids. One named after Emmett Smith. One named after Percy Harvin. Is that the wow. truth? Wow. Yes. These are facts. That's, that's real. Oh, these are real facts, man. I'm a Gator fan for real, man. I love that. Like I'm gonna be buried in like Gator stuff. Bury me in an alligator. Like I don't even care. Like it's Florida. That's Gator what I am man. about A and M too. I mean, I don't have kids. Who is A and M? Why do you keep what? doing that? Because I want like A and M is like you got Sprite and you got Sarah Miss. You I got, will tell you that, that you guys are we are that's, we are ranked in the top ten. I don't know where Florida is. Y'all, y'all year, in the top what? I'm in the top ten. Y'all not even the, one of the best colleges in Texas. I don't well, understand how that is the top ten. But you know the NIL deal, so y'all probably paid the way in. Oh, I hope well, they I paid mean, that's, $300 that's million. Dollars. That's what I hope. I hope they gave the player every single dollar. So, but I, but fl- Hold on, I want to go back to his kids. Sorry, I'm, I'm interested. How old are they? Uh, 15 and 12. So they know how badass their names are. They they know it. Like, like Percy like knows I he's, love that. he's named after the greatest Gator football player in history. I He's to, not named after Tim Tebow. Yeah, Tim Tebow is not the great. Listen, oh, y'all talking to a diehard like <laughs> when I had. A reg- I watch football too, sir. I can be. I, I know Tim Tebow. And when I had a regular nine to five traditional job, when the Gators lost, I would call off work. When go, I was <laughs> sick about this thing. Like my kids would cry when we lose. Damn, you hadn't been to work in the last decade. Yeah. Haven't you? Oh, you just winked at me. Oh, <laughs> oh, he, oh, you just did like the poker table tombstone uh-huh. wink. Sure did. That's where we going with this. I'm you, just letting you know. In your Yukon shirt. No, 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 no. This is just to mess with him. He's yeah, that was a shot fan. at him. Yeah, that was we, a shot we, at him. We, that, so I'm a Mississippi State fan. Do you, so you don't even see, you don't even like football. What, that, that's the dumbest oh, thing boy. people say. Y'all got the ugliest uniforms. Miss it, we foot, got the same uniforms they got, they, sir. They, they, and okay, all right, relax. Why is everybody off to a bad foot? Florida, great program, greatest in the two thousands. Great, one of the greatest programs ever. And what top, probably the greatest football college football team ever. Top thirty, F- greatest college football team ever. Two thousand eight. Yeah, a lot of felons on that team. A lot we of had crime. one felon. Oh. Oh. Well, maybe felon, but you had a lot of criminals. We had mm-hmm. says what news? Y'all just going off the internet. Okay, so that's the news now, sir. No, y'all, listen, y'all uh, not gonna get on Al Bundy's internet and lie. Okay, Al Gore. Al- <laughs> <laughs> just because I brought up the dad thing, you going <laughs> Al Bundy now? Is this the internet I don't know about. <laughs> Al Bundy's internet would be amazing. Who else was a felon on that team? Well, I said criminal. Who, who else? Felon and different. who else was a criminal? Okay, so you had well, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Hernandez. Hernandez. Okay. Then you had Urban Meyer. He's oh, a yeah. he was, he's got his see, finger up people's butts. No, y'all mad that Urban Meyer was a Mac and a player and a pimp and all that. And that ain't his fault. That's what I am. I don't get that, mad at that. And nobody calls you a criminal. Well, yeah, they do. Uh, so, you're – you. But that was a great team. You're right. They won two championships. The greatest. And, and two 41 members of the 2008 Gators have been arrested. Oh, Jesus Lord. Those are technical difficulties. Oh, no, that's no, no, fair. If you want to count after, like, I can't control what people do after in their lives. I don't know that 41 Mississippi State players have been arrested in the last 100 I don't, years. I can't even name well, 41 Mississippi State players. I can. And that's sad. It's a sad life, buddy. 
I, be a, be an A and M fan. Could I name forty one Florida Gators? I bet I could. You could. Of course I could. Yeah, you can. Could. I right. could name forty one. He's an encyclopedia. Can you name ten A and M players? Oh, ten yeah. Aggies? I can name I ten can Aggies name, off this team. I can name three. You can Who? name more than three. Uh you got Dak Prescott. That's Mississippi. No, no, State. no, not Mississippi. Texas A and M. Okay. You got the boy that did the Johnny Menzel. Right. Evans was a Mike Aggie. Evans, yeah. yeah. Dude. There's two massive There's ones two ma- in the NFL, yeah. right? Yeah, massive. Right. Like massively physically and also fame wise. One well, number one pick. And a Super Bowl MVP. I just don't I just don't like when I think about the Aggies, I just think of like y'all not Texas. Miles right? Miles Garrett. Ever heard of him? He was an Aggie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Von see, Miller. See, see, Von Miller. Nobody cares Ryan about Tannehill. Him. Nobody cares about who? Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill. Is the starting quarterback in the league. Ryan Tannehill is like <laughs> it's like the Sonny Water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Oh, see, well, I, 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 my my takes I'm are so. I'm with everybody today. Yeah, my takes is just so. On, I, Brandon I, just doesn't want to argue today. He's trying to be a face these days. Who? Me. I'm a I'm a baby. I'm a wrestling guy. I'm a baby face. Yeah, he, yeah. He, I used to be a heel. Yeah. You, I, I, feel, I feel like you both, and I like you. I'm a tweener. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, like that you. I I'm like a Stone Cold you. Steve Austin in '97. Stone Cold when he was doing the Million Dollar Dream. Yeah, yeah. People don't even That's know that. That's the ringmaster, yeah. See what I mean? The people don't know their no, history. They don't know. These people don't Ted, know. They don't know Ted DiBiase. These people around here. But on football. Ted not, DiBiase actually had his not, theme song. That's Ted DiBiase. T- Ted DiBiase. Sorry. His theme song used to be in our podcast. We had to take it out for uh, legal rights. His but. son also played college football. For who? The Aggies? Like Millsaps. Like a small Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. Aggies are the home of the 12th man. Mm-hmm. Right. The dumbest tradition. Why well, is that? that's not even their dumbest tradition. Well, yeah. that might be. What's that, their do you know about? No, no, do you he, know about he makes this? this up. Well, what? He makes this you up. Have, did you know about We're their not big? Gonna, we don't have to do the nut grabbing thing. Yeah, that's true. What do they do? They There's grab each other's fo- nuts. No, they grab their own nuts in one photo. Ab- one photo. To no. simulate the pain of the, the players on the field, they grab their hey, nuts. We don't need to talk about Ain't in this whole podcast. I agree. We need to talk about Florida. It's about Florida. Let's not attack nobody. Because listen, listen, listen. We need to talk about Florida. We're not here. The Florida Gators are the best college football program in the history of college football. You keep saying that. <laughs> the 2018 is the best hey, football team in Josh, history. Josh, thank you for being here. It's 2022 right now. When the last time Mississippi State won one? It won one what? A, a, a national championship in football. It's about the friendships you make along the way. <laughs> it's not about just winning championships. It's, that's the only thing it's about. Also, you guys hired away our athletic director and our uh, football coach. You're trying to be Dan up. Dan Mullen point. was our coach before. He, he. The reason he got your job was because he was a Gator first. No, nah, not really. He was offensive coordinator. That doesn't count. The offensive – oh, my gosh. Anthony Richardson. Go, is going to be part of the one, like, top three greatest college quarterbacks in the history of the game. I feel like you're speaking too hyperbolic. Hyperbolic. Wait. About Anthony Richardson? About anything you say Florida. Excuse me. You said top five player ever to play the game? Three. This year. Oh, okay. This year? That's going to be the – like, Anthony He'll be Richardson, in New York. He's 6'5", 240. Mm-hmm. He just ran a 4 4 40 yesterday. That's awesome. When he throws it, does he throw to the other team some? Listen. You have technical difficulties sometimes. Mm-hmm. You seem and, to have a lot of those with the Florida Gators. And Anthony, I feel like Anthony Richardson is going to have a breakout year. I think mm. um, he's going to rush for probably fourteen hundred plus. He might throw for about twelve hundred. Um, he'll he'll probably be around so 1,200, By the way, would be a disaster. Disaster. Yeah. What throwing for that? Yeah. yeah. Nah, not in this offense. This offense. That's a hundred yards a game, John. This offense is fifty-seven percent run heavy, and we have three good running backs, so we're going to be run heavy anyways. Mm. I know he needs my, to throw I, more than hundred yards a game. We though. don't have to. This offense will look similar. To the 2008 game, but a yeah, little Tebow bit was throwing more. for 330 a game. Tebow was throwing for like 240. Neither one of us are right, probably, but it, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> the numbers sound great, though. I will say uh-huh. the numbers sound. Don't legit. worry about it. In a couple seconds, somebody gonna get this statistic He's up. It up. 2000, yeah. 2008, Tim Tebow passing yards divide by 12. How about that? No, nah, uh, 13, 14, 14. 14. Yeah. Who's a better quarterback, college football quarterback, Cam Newton or Tim Tebow? Cam Newton. Okay. Not even close. You don't like Tim Tebow as much. I feel like Tim Tebow. I feel like if this is what happened in 2009, after Percy Harvin went to the NFL, yeah. and Tim Tebow came back, the Gators were the Gators, but the Gators weren't as threatening when Percy Harvin left. No, Chris I, Rainey and Jeff Demps couldn't. Couldn't. I feel like Tim Tebow was a was a good leader, but I feel like he had he gets a lot of credit that he doesn't deserve. Not saying he doesn't deserve any credit, but they they, they are like. If Cam Newton would have played in 2009, we would have had a national championship. People act like no. Tim Tebow was. What the, was it? Oh. It's not much. He, he threw he in, less than 240 a game. I, I think. Told, what was it? 2008 threw for. Oh, okay, so 2007 he threw for 3,200 yards. 2008 2,700. 2009 2,800. That's and that's including SEC and uh, BCS championship. You, yeah, but that's still way more than what you said for yeah, your but, guy this year. But your we, guy's going to throw for 3,000 yards. Nah, this year. we weren't run heavy in 2008. We will be run heavy this year. 
Mm. Anthony Richardson will lead the Gators in rushing yards this year. That's, I, that's, I mean, not, I, that's not a crazy. I thing believe either. that could happen. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, real talk. Don't 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 do the greatest thing ever. Okay. Real real talk. How many games do you expect to win this year? What would be a successful year for Florida Gators? We got to win. If we win seven games, it's a disappointment. We we got to win ten plus. Oh, ten. And like minimum. Ten. Ten's fine. To be a ten. great season. To be a great season, we were national championship. Yeah. We're I mean, it's, it's your first. It's your coach's first year. But I don't think you understand the team we got coming back. I don't. And understand I think Billy Napier. I think Billy Napier is a tremendous coach. I think he's a tremendous motivator. And I also think him being able to hire a staff of fifty individuals is very important. It's well, it's it's one coach every three players on our team. Well, let me let me let me. You're doing something that every fan base does. We what? all do. When we get a new coach. No, no. This, but you, you got to understand. This you is hope bad. he's a good coach. You don't, nah. know, you don't know he's a good SEC we coach. Hate, we hate it. You hope he's a good coach. We hated Jim McElwain collectively. Well, he, yeah. he, he The was. moment he stepped Sharks, down, yeah, well, yeah. we didn't like Jim McElwain. Did you like Dan Mullen when he came in? <clears throat> I, th- I think he was exciting, but I also knew Dan, uh, Dan Mullen was stubborn. So I knew he, he wouldn't change stubborn. things. Yeah. Well, he was loyal to his assistant but coaches. We, and, and, again, we're acting like we weren't a player, player two away from competing in championship football games with Dan Mullen. Well, that year you uh, you were you were cruising. You, you lost 38-35 to A&M. That's fine. You lose on the road. But then the shoe game to LSU kind of threw everything that, that off. That killed us. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it wasn't just that play. Like a lot of people like to talk about just that play. The, the entire game has to be played. We shouldn't have gotten to that point with a down LSU team. Well, that was Todd Grantham as well, giving up 30, 38 points to an Todd, LSU team. So I am a player. I'm, I'm a player. I, am, I apologize. I'm a fan that says this. Coaches don't play the game; they coach the game. Right. So when people put a lot of blame on the coaches, you, ah, the players still got to make tackles, they got to make interceptions, they got to make catches. Uh, players got to make their blocks. Yeah, but guess what? If a coach uh, has been at multiple positions throughout his the country and keeps having the same issues at every single stop, did he? Was he, he like that in Mississippi? He had a lot of third down denominator. issues. He had a lot of third down issues. He had a lot of uh, big play issues over the top. Always had that. So, uh, and there was a Todd Grantham thing where he would be a lights out for a year or two, and then he would fall off, and that happened at Florida. But as well. I think recruiting matters as well. We weren't getting uh, the four and five stars either. So um, when one four star goes down and your next player is not rated or a walk on, it's trouble. How much, from a fan standpoint, because we've talked about this a lot with Dan Mullen, like he didn't say a lot of the right stuff sometimes. Like he would make people mad in like press conferences. Like, we yeah. all, is, but do you think that played into getting rid of him too? I think with Dan Mullen, like it he was wouldn't play main, the game. I think it was mainly, a lot of people says it's the things he said to media. I think he was a player's coach, but I think it was mainly he wouldn't change. Mm-hmm. And I think the players in the locker room even got sick of it. That's fair. So, how many times you been in the swamp? Um,. 12, it's in my top five. Maybe 12. It's in my top five stadiums in the country. It's the greatest stadium in the it's, country. It's not the greatest great. I'm going to tell you why. This is, see, you I, think, there's 130 stadiums. I gave you top five, but you want to take number one. This is why the Swamp is the most. Swamp's awesome. The, it's but, hot the, but the reason what makes it so uh, revered and it's just so scary to play in, you are 10, 20 yards away from right. the field. Mm-hmm. And the loudness and like the passion, and you are engulfed. In like just orange uh, and blue. I'm gonna get you a ticket to go see an LSU game in Tiger Stadium. I throw up. That's the number one state. Nah. Who, who do you view as your biggest rival? Georgia or state? Florida State. Okay. Florida State definitely. I don't know what people be talking about the Florida State game, and it's because Florida State been down, but Florida State is like the soul bowl for us. Like mm. that's a gut punch every year. No matter who's good or bad that year, it's either. Florida. It's like you cannot lose to Florida State. Well, how, now Kentucky. I'm sorry. I no, no, no. Go, no go for it. Go for it. Kentucky has become a thorn and the reason I'm starting to hate Kentucky because Kentucky suck mm-hmm. and now they beat us they think they good <laughs> and when, when you lose to somebody like Kentucky Kentucky fans are the absolute worst <laughs> so they can agree with that their new money their new money and they act like they've been good for a long time and it makes me like yeah. so now they say no we're Florida no y'all Kentucky but here's the and thing they love Will Levis every, yes every fan love him. every fan base is very annoying every fan base is not UConn I don't know if they have a fan base. I'm, this is what I said. I'm wearing this as a, to mock him. So well, he, uh, he is the fan base. Like, right. can you imagine like waking up and be like, "We gonna win today," knowing you ain't gonna win today? Oh, it's I can only imagine been that. that. I mean, we we kind of have similar stories, right? We had a great 2000s and in that was football. Sin- yeah, and then no, t- I, I would say UConn and Florida football, yep. right? <laughs> and then in the 2010s, yeah. what a one B. In why 2010s, is he like this? <laughs> why, why, why are you doing this? See? Uh, no, and I'm, then in the 2010s, right. it, it's just gone to shit. We've no. made, we've had a few bad hires. Y'all have never been on the same level as Florida. I never said we were on the same level, but what I'm Brandy. saying is, we've had similar uh, 
character arcs. We have not. Yes, we have. No, I, the same. They're the exact same. 2011. <laughs> also, the rent is equally as revered yeah. as the swamp. Did you, yeah. did you, know, did you know that yeah. the rent's the loudest place uh, Heisman players ever played in? That's what RG3 I would, said. I, I wouldn't if, if RG, RG like RG3? Did I like RG3 yeah. in college? Or just like in general? I like him in college as a player. Okay, yeah. He said, he said and, I mean, this is how you know he's lying. He said, and he played in the Big 12, went to a lot of places, right? He said the loudest stadium he ever played in was UConn. He's a liar. Liar. He's not a liar. He said he's Listen. played at Oklahoma, Nebraska. Do you Texas love football? Name? Yes, of course. So when football season is done. JV MVP 2011. Relax, yeah. Do you, do, you, do, <laughs> do you remember, like, back in the day when football was off TV, like NFL, college, and then we have to watch, like, European football? No, he's yeah. like. You remember those days? Yes, yeah, yeah. He does not. When use. football was off TV, if UConn was on TV playing football, I would rather watch nothing than watch. Well, that's UConn a football bit. Game. All right. Well, then you don't love football. I, no, I don't. You don't love ball. Yeah, you don't know you ball. You don't love ball. You don't ball know ball. Ball is your life. <sighs> I, I, I wish we had like a rating system. Do right you now. remember how? How did? I don't know if you said this. How old are you? I'm I'm 37. I'm 43. All right. Uh, do you remember growing up with Jefferson Pilot Sports? Yeah. Remember JP. Yeah. Remember how bad that was. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You, of course, now, growing up, growing up, if you had Florida in the '90s and the 2000s, you didn't play on JP a lot. I played on JP all the time. JP was the 11:30 game um, down. Uh, you're in the Eastern Time Zone, so it was 12:30 game. But it was the 11:30 game, and it was the worst broadcast. And, the, and, like <laughs> and no the, matter what, and the fifth SEC game would get it every week. Do you guys get SEC games on TV still, Mississippi State? Well, TV's national, Josh. Yeah, well, but do you? But do they play you guys? Like they play your games? On yes, TV? yeah. What channel? Every channel that you're on, we're on. We you're, get on CBS. We get on ESPN. You're on we get ESPN on, 360. We like get 360 on ESPN. We get. Do I have a watch ESPN just to watch Mississippi State do games? You, yes. You got ESPN.com. Watch ESPN.com is what it's called. You guys Josh. almost lost the ESPN.com game uh, last year. That's almost true. doesn't count. Sanford, yeah. Well, you lost one a couple years ago to Georgia Southern. Yep, you guys blocked each other. Well, that was technical difficulty. I forgot That's about true. technical yeah, difficulty. Yeah. It, it yes. didn't even broadcast on ESPN. Glitch. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna do, uh, we're going to do a little. I'm going to let you get out of here because I know you got to go do the rundown, right? Okay. Uh, so so um, we're going to do some. Do you have any Florida tattoos? Gator tattoos? No, I'm going. I'm going to actually. Um, when I get back to Florida, I'm probably going to get the gator up here. I'll nice. Something to put up here. Oh, we're going to do. Uh, what's the I mean, name? I got. I got. I actually got Texas tattooed on my arm. Word Florida. association. We're going to do word association. All right. Oh, cool. Let's Ooh. do it. I'm going to say a word. Smart. I'm going to say a word, Smart. I'm gonna say a word and you. Say, it's just a concept. It's no, 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 I like. I like. <laughs> it's a good idea. Okay. I'm going to do word association. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just a thing. What is wrong? Right. I'm going to do word association. It's I'm going to say a word and you just tell me your thoughts as soon as I say it. Okay. First thing that comes to my mind. First thing. All right. Tennessee Volunteers. I ain't gonna curse, but garbage. Georgia Bulldogs, overrated. <laughs> they just won the national championship. Overrated. The Florida State Seminoles, garbage. Uh, FAMU's better than them. <laughs> the Rattlers? Yeah. FAMU. FAMU. I like the way you say garbage. By the way, it's like garbage. the true let's, hate. Let's see how we it. can test this hatred. Watch this. Deion Sanders. <sighs> so Deion Sanders from the crib. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Me and Deion Sanders, we're from the same place. He's in Fort Myers, right? He's in Fort Myers, so he's 30 minutes away from where I'm from. Uh, he's well, also your coworker now. Can't, I can't wait to meet Deion. Coach Prime, garbage. Florida State, <laughs> garbage. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, With all due respect, he's garbage. Garbage. Florida State, he already knows. That's know his it. name, not mine. Urban Meyer. Best, gr greatest coach to ever have coached the game in college. Nick Saban. But he's not as good as Garbage, overrated. How is he overrated? Nick Saban's overrated. Nick Saban? Remember when he ended your guy's uh, run? He did it, though. He Remember made Tebow cry. Mark he Ingram? made Tebow cry. Okay, but think about this, though. Julio Jones? But think about this, though. Think, just think about this. I'm thinking. Nick Saban beat Urban once in the SEC championship game. That's all he needed to do. Urban retired. Urban, if well, Urban he, sticks through the 2010, because he had Cam and he had Jeff Driscoll coming, who was the number one rated Gatorade player of the year that year. He didn't have Cam. No, he had Jeff Driscoll coming, who was supposed to replace Tim Tebow. Jeff Driscoll was trash. He was trash. He, he was trash. Garbage. He was trash in Muschamp's system. Jeff well, Driscoll was an option was quarterback with a better arm than Jeff Tim Driscoll Tebow. Jeff Driscoll went to La Tech and sucked there, too. No, he didn't. He threw for like 3,000, 4,000 yards. I could throw for 3,000 yards in the – I know you want me to look it up. Please. I could, th I could throw for 3,000 yards in CUSA. And Come Will on. Muschamp was also garbage. Will Muschamp wasn't a garbage coach. Will Muschamp was a great defensive, defensive coach. He was a great motivator. His brand of football at that time didn't work in the mm. SEC because he couldn't get the players Alabama was getting. 
these are Ur- well i was gonna ask do you really think urban meyer just retired because he wanted to retire or he had some word i think he yeah had, <laughs> oh sorry i just he, I, I think he i think he had personal i think it was some personal stuff but i also yeah. think he looked at the cupboard and was like hey okay we might be down for you and the gator nation we don't take that it wasn't the headaches i think it has some stuff to do with it okay. word association we still here <laughs> aaron hernandez Greatest tight end in history. I don't condone what he did. I'm not. I'm going to say R.I.P. to everybody involved. All right, can we put that out? Uh, Josh Prey does <laughs> yeah. not condone double murder. Yeah, nope. I, that's a good step. Uh, he murdered not. more than two people too. I do not. Well, we, at least allegedly. double murder. All right, I got allegedly. one. He also killed, murdered himself. All right, Gaines, allegedly. Gainesville strippers. I ain't never seen a Gainesville. Sh- no, oh, wait. Urban Meyer has. It's a woman in the room. I ain't gonna even do it. Okay. No, you can do oh, it. I'm not going to. She stripped I killed, before. If it was, uh, if it was sw- flipped. First thing that comes to my mind is Urban Meyer. But, see, I feel like people put rich people, rich people with notoriety on a pedestal, that's I feel unfair. That. Yeah. And I feel like It's not fair say, to us. People saying, like, facts. <laughs> and, and, and in about two more years, I'm going to be on this platform like, my name is Josh Pray and I do not have an addiction. But what mm-hmm. I'm saying is, I feel like Urban Meyer is still a man, a man with money and a man with a certain taste. And I feel like people don't even understand coaches – they're, they're away from their wives and kids 18, 20 hours a day, mm-hmm. nine, 10 months a year. It's go, I'm not condoning infidelity, but it's almost a given to say one of them coaches is going to have a side chick or two. Also, Shelly seemed like she stands by him. She, and I think, and she's I think a ride she, or die. And I think if that's the case, I think they deal with it and they're okay with it. I'm just saying. Okay, all right. All right. And when it gets public, it gets embarrassing. Shelly was, Shelly was okay with the lap dance last year. She wasn't sure because she probably got a dude. Oh. Well, that's an accusation that we can't Alleged. back up. Yeah, it, at all. I know. I said probably. Okay. All right. <laughs> With no B, probably. Oh, he just said probably. Okay. Probably. P r o l l y. Probably. Um, you might be the funniest dude at Barstool. I, I agree, Please, man. Why'd you I say that? He, he has that. thought I was funny the whole time. And Shit. I don't see how y'all don't get his humor. Oh no, I love I love his humor. But see, here's the thing: if you tell him that you love it, then he's just going to be insufferable for the next week. Two weeks. I actually, you know what, you know what, B. I actually think your coworkers are holding you down and they don't oh. want to let you fly. Oh, I agree. No, no. I, no. F- I, f- I feel like you need the Power Rangers this thing Thank and let you. your, oh, no. your no. wings no. on your back don't fly that his, oh, and become no. a Megazord. Can I, oh, you just, no. you just opened. Can I ask you a question? No. You asked me too. You, you've, you've only been here about ten minutes. This podcast, very successful podcast. Yeah. Oh. Who do you think is the heart and soul don't of this, this podcast? Her. Ah. Oh, thank you. She, 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 she. Listen, see, from based on what we're saying. Seems very literate when it comes to sports. Seems Thank extremely intelligent. Thank you. Um, attractive lady. Thank so, you, you know, men and women are going to tune in because uh. women want to support. The men are going to be like, oh, my God. So <laughs> I th- I think you take her away, you're going to have a very big uh We do have tens canal. of female listeners. Tens of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how I many? Mostly dudes. <laughs> tens of them. But I don't think y'all understand. Like, so I'm, as a, if a dude, I'm kidding. If a dude likes a podcast and the chick say, why do you like it so much? Oh, it's this... It's this chick on there. Well, I'm watching it too. I'm gonna support her too. And even if it's fake yep. love, it's love. It's love. love Real love. We but love every listener. Heard, but I do him. think you're the most entertaining. The That's podcast fair. I've been involved with you. And again, like we don't I don't do the comedy you guys do. I'm not a podcast person. I don't have a podcast, so I don't got an agenda. My comedy <laughs> is <laughs> You my, have an agenda? It's called the Gator agenda. Yeah, but my comedy is probably not even it's probably weird to the bar stool fan base. But I think the funniest person I've met in content is Brandon. <laughs> Like you know what? I will take the kids. He said I was a heart and soul, though, so I'll take it. No, and no. I will, I will tell you. All the way around. I, listen, you, this guy can be on the show. No, it's fact. A, no, for it, sure. Y'all, if, if y'all did a poll and say, who's the funniest person at Barstool, I guarantee you, if they're not being funny, it's Brandon. No, like, there, I would be like 15th. How? The There's uh, Nick and them. And Maybe I ain't meet everybody. What's that from the people I've yeah. met? Okay. Well, I what, get you, it. what you need to do is make sure you tell him that a lot during the college football season because when no. he, when we get on the show with Dan and Dave, it's tough for Brandon. Oh, you sometimes. haven't met Dan, Dan or Dave. So they're, so they're just like you? No, they're no, they're, they're much more successful. They're and very mean not quite as rich, but they may, they gang up uh, yeah, on him a that, lot. Uh, and I have to try. All right, to... let's talk football, and then we'll let you get out of here. Um, <laughs> oh, the are they looking for him now? Him. Josh? Wait, one more question? Yeah. You got one more question? I, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's do it. I love it. Give me I, a good one, man. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead. When do the Florida Gators win a national title again? Two. 
I almost said a cuss word. Yeah, I, I, I know, yeah. <laughs> Boy, listen, hey, listen, 2022, 2023, Gator Nation is back. If you ain't a Gator, you Gator bait, left under right, do it right, we gonna fight. It's great to be a Florida Gator. The sky is orange, the sun is blue, the sun is orange, the sky is blue. That's because God's a Gator fan, baby. Okay. Aggies are garbage. Mississippi State is garbage. Um, UConn don't exist. Florida State is Florida Steel University. The U <laughs> will never be back. That's why they got rid of them stupid ass chains, and we don't care nothing about a Georgia Bulldog. Worst championship in college football history. <laughs> My name is Josh Prey, and I approve this message. Josh Prey. Thank hey, you very Josh, much for beautiful. being here. Hopefully Passionate when he comes back, he's part. in the year yeah. 2022, not 2009. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before we continue, I do want to talk to you, Casey, and you, Katie, about the new best digital wallet in the world for gamblers. Which is really important, Jack, because, I mean, you can gamble at any time, right? But we know football season's coming up, which is when I really ramp up my gambling responsibly. So please tell me about this wallet. Yes. Everyone listening is probably a college football fan. You may be a baseball fan. You may be a soccer fan, too. There's a lot of UFC, big UFC events coming up. And you want to manage your bankroll. That's one of the number one things you do Pretty important. From, the, from the perspective of responsible gambling. And you know who's going to help you with that? Who? Skrill. Skrill, Love is, a good Skrill has been used by sophisticated gamblers for a while now to manage their bankroll, whether they're playing games like poker or betting on their favorite sports. They manage their bankroll roll using the wallet, which allows them to pay instantly and securely, which we're all trying to be more in the era of, you know, there's hackers everywhere. We want it. We want it. We want to make sure it's secure. And it's payments without limits, basically. You can access your bankroll with instant deposits and withdrawals and draw the cash using your prepaid card. And it's also really important, Jack, because you said sophisticated gamblers have been using it for a long time. I am not a sophisticated gambler. I don't know if you would consider yourself one. Katie, nope. I don't know about you. Uh, but because sophisticated gamblers use it, I trust it more because I am unsophisticated and they trust it, so I do. That's 100% true. And let's just say, Casey, Skrill is the best digital wallet for sports better. So it's a no-brainer to create your free account right now. Right this instant. Free. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. You're going to go over to and sign up at Skrill.com. That's S-K-R-I-L-L.com mm -hmm. slash Barstool. That's two L's in Skrill. And to create your free account and complete the account verification. This is very important. To complete your account verification, you have to click the follow the game button after you register so you can start using your digital wallet today so one more time you go to scroll.com s-k-r-i-l-l.com slash barstool you register then you press the button follow press the it. game mm -hmm. that way after you register you'll be verified and you'll be ready to use your wallet today Skrill, it's it's Skrill. it's a great name Skrill. and just remember it's Skrill x like you know the dj minus the ex Yes, it's That's just how I remember it. Yep, best digital wall for sports gamblers out there, and I know we got a lot listening. So, hop on board and shout out Skrill for supporting the pod. <laughs> All right, Katie, come on in. Come on. It's hot in. in here. I'll say that. All right, so we're doing the show, so there's no chance to no no reason to stop. You turn the mic down because she's going to be talking, not him. Well, I'm turning it up for her. Oh, okay, he, turn it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's I don't hot speak. in here. Being yeah. sorry, I had several people being like, "We need him. We need him. We need oh, him." Oh, it is. Yeah, we're late. Um, oh, these are six shirts, by the way. I'm oh, sweating. I, I got a text message about it. Yeah. Wow. I did not, because they know not to um, bother the king. Said, guys, I'm, I'm for real. He said that on the yak yesterday. That you're it, the funniest guy? With KB, Nick, and uh, like all Rome, and Rome yeah. sitting there. And I'm like, he's like, this is the funniest guy here. And everybody looked like, what? <laughs> and I even I was like, no. I mean, we we can't give him You're a funny any, guy, though. Yeah, you know, you're hilarious. Well, I'm a funny guy, but funny I'm not. Hat. After, funny guy. after him. So how, how, and how, I, funny how, how am I funny? How am I funny? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you're funny. You know what? I, can I tell you something? I told Katie this the other day. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you're purposely doing this or I don't know. It's not that you're purposely doing it. You're accidentally doing it, but you're you're giving away somehow how sweet you are to other people other than just this podcast. Wow, when did that happen? I'm just saying there are girls in the office that are talking about how sweet you are. No. Hey, Katie, who? back me up. What? Don't say who because who? I don't want him to stop. Multiple girls that do not do content with you the other day are like, 
Yo, Brandon like is showing like some like sweet side of him recently, and I was the like, face yeah. Turn has been real. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I'm working on the face turn, but yeah. I don't know it was but catching you're, on. But it's already. working. It's catching on, and it, you know, but but females ca- catch on to this shit. So you've been yeah. letting a, a little bit of vulnerability out. Wow. Apparently, not just to me and Katie. So other females are picking up on it. I'm just letting you know. And that's you, amazing that women are catching it because you know they're usually not that smart. Yeah. Oh boy. Mm. Okay. Um, you're doing so, so well. should we do have you talked today to, we're going to do three up no. three down okay. it is our annual you know three disappointing teams but i decided we're going to do three teams that uh, are going to exceed above expectations mm-hmm. and three teams below expectations we do it every year i don't know that we've ever combined it into one show but three, three up, up three, three down, down. It's, like it's, it. It, it, it's a play on words Can it we works. do uh could you you guys give out a win total we have to do something for sportsbook yeah, uh, I've got plenty. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so I uh, did. Did she bring one? Uh, I can, can get one. Really, I can get one really quick. Also, speaking of the sports book, the rumors on the street are that you and I will be pairing up for an unnecessary roughness sports book promo. Mm-hmm. Every we week. have to think of a creative bet, yeah. which is going to be a little bit harder for college football because there's not as many player props. But we'll, we'll do it. We'll have I've think heard about some it. player props are on the way, but we'll see. Um, Allegedly, three up, three down. What's your thing? You got to get to. Oh, we'll do it after this. I don't understand why. I, I have no idea what you're doing. I have you no idea me? exactly what's happening either. I just know that this is something that has to happen. Is it another person? There is a person, yes. Are they coming in? Yes. Oh, Would you like to I, have that now? I know what it is. Why don't I know? Yeah, do it now. I don't know what Go it is. Go ahead. We'll do three up, three down. We'll do th- before this, after, after no, this. I, I, you so, ain't going to be happy. As soon no. as we get done with this, we will do three up, three down. Okay. Well, Katie. I'll get them. So we're bringing them in. Uh, we can just vamp for a little bit. There are a couple of things we got to talk about. First of all, Sam Hartman at Wake Forest um, had a, proce- a medical procedure done. Um, you know, he's out indefinitely. If you trust rumor on the street, maybe it's a month and a half. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. We really don't know. Uh, we really haven't found out what, what exactly it is. Certainly, thoughts go out to Sam Hartman because you don't want to have a player go through something like this right before any time, but right before the season starts kind of stinks. Especially when there's like not a lot of details out there, which nobody, it's private. There yeah. shouldn't be, but it does seem like it's a lot more serious than, than I think. Now I will say this, if for. the one, if the month and a half timeline is legit and I don't know if it is or not, uh, I wouldn't panic on Wake Forest as it, it just, first of all, human, uh, human beings are more important than football records and football teams, but this is a mm-hmm. college football podcast. So we're going to talk about, you know, if he's out for a month and a half and misses the first three games, I think Wake Forest is still fine as a football team. So, <laughs> oh, oh, goodness gracious. I got to turn the mic down. Yeah, I probably do. I would like to preface this. Can't turn me down. I don't know what exactly is happening. All I know is that I was sent a, a text after we, our last episode that asked when we were recording again, I said when we were recording, and he cons very nicely, asked if he could join to correct us. I have nothing to do with this. this not correct. Not, this is not a big deal, but I just got to talk to Jack for a second. I told you the only goddamn thing I, know, I never wanted I to have happen I know. was cons to be on this show. She, That's what I said. She That's went against I, the family. I didn't you go. Had nothing to do with this? Oh, swear to God. I, I will swear to God Jack had nothing to do with this. I didn't even tell Katie until today. I told Connor he could come on, and I thought that maybe we could all be a nice family together. Right. I thought I was like an extended family member. All right, this is no? uh, Connor Crayon. Uh, Close he, enough. He is uh, a former practice dummy for the uh, University uh. of Army. <laughs> is it Army State or Army Tech? Yeah, one of those. Army Tech University <laughs> in West Point, New York. Cons, what do you have? Well, first, let me start by saying, how all? How are you all doing? We're good, thank We're you. We're great, thank you. Okay, how fantastic. I'm excellent, I'm excellent. We're getting closer and closer. Here's how you know we're getting close. I put up a tweet today just comparing the different footballs used in college football. So that's that's where we're at. Well, so... I bet that you tweet know, was we, enthralling. Yes, we, we have, it was. We, <laughs> as you know, Cons, we have more... We're, our YouTube channel is still a lot smaller than our listeners. Yes. So what I always tell people when moments like this is they should be going to watch YouTube, watching YouTube because of the facial expressions. I mean, the joy in Brandon's face. It's unbelievable When I walked in the looks. room was unlike anything I mean, I've seen in a long time. I've never seen a happier face. Yes, Let's ever. get to what you're here for. What okay. are you here for? Number one, number one, you guys were talking about your ultimate road trip right. last episode, and yeah. you were talking about the Army Air Force game. Right. To give you a little... A little color obviously we have the army navy game at the end of the year sure. there is a push right now to make the army air force game more important 
So that's why they're doing neutral site. They're, they're Y'all trying to squeeze it. out the Navy boys? Yeah, well, no. I, I don't think you can replace or even come close to replicating in the Army-Navy game. Mm-hmm. That's a part of college football so and what, sports as a whole. So you think you can beat the Fly Boys every year? Is that what it is? No, I don't think it's that. I think they're just trying to boost up the game a little bit. So that's why they're playing at a neutral location. The, the Commander's Classic is what they're it's being Where's that, Where have they been played that? that uh, Last year was the first year at the Texas Rangers Stadium. Oh, yes, Arlington. Arlington at a uh, baseball stadium. You wanted to go to it. That was part of your yeah, no, road I trip. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Sure, sure. Yes. I, I, I'm, listen, I'm for the troops. Yeah, I know you are. I yeah. have four favorite teams, Mississippi State, Army, Navy, Air Force. He always leaves out the Coast Guard. How do you feel about this? Uh, which team is the Coast Guard again? They have, they have their own academy. I don't know Again, what level of football which, which they play, Which college football team is D3. the Coast Guard? Somebody tell me. Coast Guard no. is, a, is a D3 team. Yeah, they're D3. Okay, well, we don't do D3 football. Sorry to, hey, sorry to anybody who played D3 football at yeah. Marshall. It's not that big uh, of a deal. Who played, uh, who played D3 football? It's not that big of a deal, but you're nowhere near as important as the D1 players. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The D3 people are not as important as the D1 people. Oh, wow. I'd like that on record. you D1 football, you can talk down to these people? I'm, not, I'm just repeating what you said. You're a real piece of shit. I'm sorry, are any of the D3 people in a video game? Did you ever play as yourself on the video game? All the time. But that was awesome. only every I mean, time you, I you played would play it. With did you play with yourself every time? Of course oh, I, I play, did. I played with myself every time I played that video game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about penis. I, I know. I um, said. Yeah. And then I had one other thing. Oh yeah, this is. So you all Wait, were talking about. We've already about, gotten to a thing. Yes. The, the okay. first thing was the Army Air Force. I was providing some clarity there on why it's being played at a neutral stadium. Brandon's napping on his microphone. And now I would just want to educate you guys and what Casey was alluding to when she was talking about the different special operations community and the different branches of the military and why the, everybody thinks the Navy SEALs are so good. Yeah. You know the old quote from Walter Payton, if, if you're good, you're going to tell everybody. Yeah. If you're great, people will tell you. Yeah. Well, right now for the last 10 years, every, the Navy SEALs have been telling everybody how great they are. Yeah. So that's why I think people believe that, that it's the Navy SEALs when in fact I would argue that the... Army Special Forces, you know, Delta. Now, is it the Army Rangers? The Army Rangers are also operators within the Army. We have multiple specialized units. Okay. <laughs> Could you give this a real quick tug? <laughs> yeah, Just hold yeah, it. Hold, okay. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. No, so what he, else are we talking about? He wanted, he wanted, all right, he here's your elite forces in, in, in the military. Uh, yes. One is Navy SEALs. No. Mm. Two is... I heard that, too. Uh, is there a frogman? Is that a thing? That's the Navy that, that's SEALs. That's another name for the SEALs. That's All right, so that, yeah. the, they got two names. Don't forget Frogman about. is two. <laughs> Don't forget about. The the uh, t- Top Gun. <laughs> yeah, Top Gun Air Force. Top Gun Air Force. pilots. Uh, okay. Even though they're from that was a, they're the they're Navy. Navy pilots, right? Oh, oh, they're 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 better too. So there's four. Yeah, yeah there's four. Um, I'm sure the Coast Guard has an elite unit. Yes. The best. Fish. They have the rescue swimmers. Rescue swimmers, of course. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, what do you guys have in the little army? Rangers? We have the Rangers. We have special operations, special What's forces. Special forces. Yeah, that, special you don't forces. even come up with a name for it. You just call it special forces. We have the A teams. That's a TV show. No, no, that's an. But it, it stemmed from Operation is, Detachment Alpha. The, the is B.A. Baracus in it? B.A. Baracus is in it. Do they okay. have their pronouns on there? No. Yeah. Uh, How woke are you guys? No. What about the Green Beret? Yeah, that's special forces. Okay. Yes. Well, why don't you call it that? That's well, our Green Berets. Yeah, yeah, the Green Berets. We also have Delta. Also, if you're named for the color of your hat, are you really badass? Yes. What about a Blue Angel? That's the Navy's demonstration team. I'm, that's cool. I'm just going through me and Kate's text messages. I, okay. I said the same thing that the night I was texting you, I was also texting well, Yeah, the Blue Angels don't fight anybody, though. They uh, just fly around and yeah, look they're pretty. They're awesome. Yeah, maybe. Oh, they're the ones that flew the, the commercial plane, or the... The COVID planes. Who's the Thunderbirds? Mm-hmm. Around That's the Air Force's demonstration they're team. They're cool, too. Yeah. Blue Angels are cool. Yeah. You ever flown in a fighter? No, they still, we're still trying to get a ride in a fighter you jet. You haven't gone in a fighter jet? Nope. I've been in a fighter jet. Really? I'm yeah. Be in a wow. Jet. I'm jealous of that. When I was in a fucking little newspaper shit, yeah. they had an air show come through and they would take all the little local media up and How just, was they that? didn't do anything. They just would go but still, upside down? Yeah. Huh? Did you get to no, upside down? No, no. no. They, they took a couple people and they did a loop, but they didn't. I, I yeah. told them. We're still in talks to get some rides and some fighter jets. Over at zero block thirty, download some. Could you could you uh, do like a flyover wow. for a game or something? I would can, love can I, that. Oh, you know what is possible? So every game, home game at Army, we have a flyover with helicopters. There's an outside chance I could get myself into that helicopter. That's pretty fucking cool. What about me? I mean, if you ever would come up to West Point for a game and stop saying you're going to come up for a game, I would love to come to West Point. You never hook it up. Brandon, I've been inviting you for at least three years now. It is true because he's also been inviting me. What's more, what's yeah. more prestigious? A degree from West Point oh or West Point High School in Mississippi? 
Wow. Because I have. There's two schools of thought on that. Yeah. There's the thought that uh, nobody even knows what West Point High School is, and no one won. cares, so you wouldn't put it in yeah. the same sentence. We've won a lot of state. We've won eleven state championships, more state championships than anybody. Yeah. So in in, in what like cheerleading? In, in, in football. In football, but oh, we're at West Point Greenway football. Ever okay. heard of it? Yes. All right. Mm. All right. Well, this was a delight. Thanks for having me. I was honest. I thought it was going to be way worse because he. No, told you guys do great. One last question. One last question. Yeah. I just, yeah. I talk to Jack again. Yeah, not a big deal. Um, how long has Zero Blog Thirty been a podcast? Longer than most podcasts here on, at Barstool. I think yeah, they're, they're close here a while. to like 400 yeah. episodes or something. That's awesome. Uh, We're actually close to 500. Awesome. Okay, sorry. Uh, how, how old is uh, Unnecessary Roughness? Uh, we're on episode 212. About 212, three years? Yeah. In, in Unnecessary Roughness three years, how many times has Zero Block 30 invited one of us onto their podcast? Um, I think zero times. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We'll rectify that. Yeah. Wrecked them. Damn near Damn killed, killed him. Him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Con. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you, everyone. I thought it was going to be way worse. I'll be honest. When he texted me, I thought we had offended all of the military. He was like, I, I need. Well, it. He was like, I need. He's to, kind of a pussy. He was like, I need to 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 correct some things that were said, and I was like, oh fuck, we've offended everybody. So I will be honest. That was much much less abrasive than I thought it was going to be. Three up, three down. What's sorry? What's the rectum a reference? It's just a fun thing to say. Oh. Rectum. Damn near killed him. Yeah. That's sure. so funny. We never really talked about the Big Ten uh, TV rights, did we? No, we didn't. Katie tried uh, to get us to do a take, and you just the, the ignored fact her. That, well, I, I don't know what it is about this football season. I, we're not in football season yet, but I haven't had a spare minute to breathe. And can I, I tell I, you, it's starting to alarm me because football hasn't even started. And, like, you, and I might be adding another show. <laughs> You do know this. I know. I, no, I, this, what show? Oh, Jack, let me tell you something. I was sitting there minding my own goddamn business, talking to Kelly Keegs and Nick Terraney. It's, and somebody, I'm not going to say it because I don't think it's announced, somebody came up to Nick and was like, hey, can you help me with this podcast that Brandon and I are going to start? And I stopped all conversation. I said, Brandon Walker? And Kelly was like, doesn't he like barely have time to do anything as it is? I was like, this motherfucker is starting a new podcast? Like in you, two weeks, you cannot do this. You need. We will pull you off. Football? No, no. Well, it, he can't do. He doesn't have time to do anything. Yeah, maybe he wants to work on his comedy brand. It's right? not. It's. It does have to do with sports. Yeah. Do not. Uh, it's called I do what I want. Can I have my pin back, please? Yeah, but Brandon, Brandon. I do what I want. You're going to be Brandon, right. you, I You can do whatever you want. It's more of the concern that you might pass away. That's fine. Boy, I'll leave a sexy corpse. Um, that's not just you. You're making life harder for other people around. That's fine. I don't care. I, it's, it's fine. Anyways. Uh, okay, here we go. We did not talk about the Big Ten TV rights now. I want to kind of wait until it all settles. Yeah, are but they official? In, no, nothing's official. But we do know that ESPN has bowed out. They're not going to be in the in the running for the rights anymore. So we're looking at CBS, NBC. Listen, the A package is already spoken for. The best game of the week is going to be on Fox. Mm -hmm. The Fox has already claimed that. But we're finding out, you know, will the Big Ten be spread around, um, you know, 2.30 or 3.30 on CBS? Will it be 3.30 on uh, NBC? Will NBC package Notre Dame and uh, Big Ten double headers, stuff like that? Here's the big question to me: Does it matter in 2022 with the streaming, with with cable not being as big? Does it matter not having a relationship with ESPN anymore? Because in 2004, that would be a killer. 2012, that would be a killer. Is it going to affect the Big Ten to not have a relationship with ESPN? I don't think so. It could. I, I don't know. That's. It, I think it's a big up in the air because. If people should talk ESPN, and, and I know from a commentary they're, standpoint, yeah. yes. Like, like they're, if they don't want to show as many highlights or talk about as, them as much, like it'll it'll hurt the brand a little bit. It, if if if. But I also think that we've gone so far on the other side of that that like everyone, even if you love the SEC or you're a fan of the SEC, everyone's like, well, ESPN has an SEC bias. So if they all of a sudden aren't talking about the Big Ten, it's just going to fall right into the same pattern it has been for think, the last five years. I don't think ESPN will care about that bias because ESPN no, they don't. is covering SEC. Right. Like. Will will ES, will ESPN take game day to Ohio State Michigan if they don't have and this isn't they won't have a Big Ten sport on their channels they won't have basketball. I would think that they still would if it would make them. I don't know that they would. What are they gonna do with the Big Ten uh, ACC like the basketball? That it won't season? happen anymore. No. That's That's it. You think they would the just Big completely Ten? avoid the Big Ten? They won't avoid it. I don't it. think they'll avoid it, but I do think they'll soften their their coverage of them. Hundred percent. But I mean, maybe even not on, uh, intentionally. 
I still think that if they were to not, like, let's say Ohio State, Michigan. Look how they handled the NHL after they left in 2005. But does it matter is the question because Fox will, matters, Fox will but... fill the gap, CBS will fill the gap, NBC will fill the gap, and, you know, does does that matter? The I, biggest I, question I think coming out of this is, let's say Apple TV bought all of the rights. Yeah. Would that negatively affect their brand? Would less people watch Big Ten football if Apple, yeah. let's say Apple TV or Amazon, bought all of the rights? Big Ten is only on Apple TV. I don't think it would hurt them in their footprint. But if you're trying to go national now, like I don't think people in the South are logging on to Apple TV to watch uh, Big Ten football. I don't, and I think even in the we've West Coast, seen it, maybe yeah. we've seen it with the MLB. The Apple TV has just they have one game a week or two games a week on MLB on Friday nights, and nobody in MLB fans don't like it. Maybe I'm just overreacting from Twitter, but I think streaming is the next revolution. Obviously, but I don't think we're there yet. I don't know if we're there to the point where it's like, oh, you have to watch Ohio State, Michigan on Apple but TV. But the thing with that too, because I agree with you, I think that because we've seen it with the MLB, the difference is is that there's 160 plus games yeah. with the MLB. If you're if you can only watch on Saturdays, the Big Ten play on Apple TV. That's different than watching like one or two MLB games okay, on Apple true. TV. That's Ultimately, I, I think this um, the Big Ten is going to get paid regardless. And here's the thing. People are going to find Big Ten football games, no matter where they are. If they're on Fox, if they're on ESPN, wherever they are, they're going to find them. I think it's going to affect – this is not a basketball podcast. It's going to affect basketball a hell of a lot more because basketball yep. relies yes. on having games on ESPN, ESPN2. On a Tuesday night, I don't even know, I have to know who's playing. Yep. I can just That's turn so it on. True. I know I'm going to get those games. But if you've got to hunt for basketball games, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to have as many viewers. People will hunt for football games. Yeah, and also, you know, you mentioned college game day, and I'm not just saying this because we have our own game day show and we like to, like, make fun of ESPN sometimes with it. I also don't think that people care near as much where college game day is if they're if it's not on their campus. Like, I don't I think, think there's I don't, a big – yeah, I think you're right. I don't think that people are like, oh, shit, they're not going to go to Ohio State, Michigan. This is horrible for the brand. I think that if you are on that campus, it's a big deal. If you're not, you're watching college – if you're a college game day fan, you're watching it no matter where That's it is. That's a great point. People freak out when game day is coming. It's awesome when game day comes to your campus. But if if game day is in Tennessee and I'm in LSU, I don't give a fuck. Game day's in Tennessee. Yeah, because the and the only the only thing that you really see is you see you know they do like the aerial shots of the campus yeah. and then they only really spend time on that game at the very end. They don't, they don't involve their location at all. No, and yeah. it's like you know depending on where they are. So I think that even we even see that with our live shows. It's like nobody that's watching our live show cares where it is unless they're in the crowd. They will do specific segments on those teams right uh, but usually like, people switch so over it's those. like but it's not for that live crowd is what I'm saying like that's the live right. crowd's not involved but with it, it is for the people that are watching the millions of people that are watching yeah. so right. it is important for your brand however like we probably had the same conversation not us specifically but college football media as a whole when the big big 10 game got moved to noon right. on Saturday and look at that it's I not really it, even mattered that much I think that has worked tremendously tremendously yeah. yep I would love the idea of a doubleheader on NBC. I think that would be awesome. Well, I, I kind of don't mind the, the, the thought of uh, gigantic, the Big Ten game of the week at noon, the SEC game of the week at 3.30, and the other conference game of the week at 7, mm -hmm. and then fill in around all those. Yeah. I mean, three three waves of gigantic games, which I guess is kind of what we got now anyway. So that's – You can um, find any of them. And, I mean, we're also – we're in the – era now where people just switch games all day every day you realize that, that there's going to be a football game played two weeks from this yes. saturday two weeks from days. Saturday. yes yeah. three weeks from today is week one yeah uconn plays um okay all right he plays. three up three down how are we going to do it i don't know we never know we, we just figure <laughs> these things out on the fly so i guess we can go across we'll go uh We'll do three up first. Okay. All right. Um, and we'll 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 take it a team at a time. Okay. Uh, I guess I will go first. So uh, three up, three teams that will perform above their station in life. Three teams that will perform better in their preseason rankings. Three teams that will rise this year. Mm -hmm. My first one, and I've kind of given these away a little bit on other shows and stuff. So I hope uh, I'm able to pass along some information here. But number one is Kansas State, mm -hmm. the Kansas State Wildcats. I believe the Big 12 is in a state of flux. I think Oklahoma will not be as strong. I think Texas will be good, but still gettable. Oklahoma State, not quite as strong. Baylor, not quite as strong. Kansas State with a um, 
a transfer quarterback. We're going to find out very quickly if it was his problem or Nebraska's problem. Uh, we're talking about Adrian Martinez, of course, Deuce Vaughn, a, a low-key Heisman contender. Well, not even low-key, it was just a Heisman contender. And then dudes across that defense. I think Kansas State, they're over-under right now on the Barstool Sportsbook. I think it's six and a half. I think they win nine or ten. I think they're in the race till the very end if if they don't win it. So I I, I really like Kansas State this year. Casey Smith. Uh, in no particular order, my number one for three up is Tennessee, and I've also given this away in the last few months. I think that there is a very, very obvious who's the best in the East team. That's the Georgia Bulldogs, and then a very glaring open of who opening of who's going to be that second team. I like Hendon Hooker. I think what Josh Heupel is doing is great. They had some bad things happen to him last year, but I think that they will exceed expectations. And I don't know. I mean, I know Big T is is Big T, but from talking to him, I do think that fans will actually be happy with their outcome this year, which means they will exceed expectations nationally. Well, they're not written in your list. I know. I you wrote three teams in your list. I you stopped writing earlier, and then I just no. I I know. Okay. But I, I, Tennessee is my number one. But they're not on your list. I only wrote three up. Right. I didn't even, that I didn't was three up. Huh? I know. I'm saying like I just I I can't just go off of my brain. Well, why'd you bring the notebook if you're going off going off your brain? But actually, I started writing this, and then I remembered we had to trick Jack, and I just left the room. Yeah, I forgot about tricking Jack. That was fun. <laughs> uh, Jack, hello. All right, I'm doing this based off of season last year. Is mm -hmm. that okay? You can do it however you want. Okay, so it's. Compared to last year, even though I don't think this team did that bad, I am saying that Clemson is going to take a massive step forward this year. And I think this defense man is bananas. Every time I'm reading an article or watching a video previewing the season, I'm like, oh, yeah, they have that guy. They have – this may be the best Clemson defense we've seen ever. Yeah. Um, it's up there with the team that beat Bama with uh, Christian Wilkins. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy the Giants drafted. The defensive lineman. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, about? they've had great defensive yeah. linemen. Yeah. Cleveland anyway. Farrell, they went to the Raiders. They had uh, Isaiah Simmons a couple of years ago. Um, Who I don't know. is one of the most shocking busts, I think, in the NFL for is me. Is he already a bust? Well, he's Seems the, early. The Cardinals gave up on him. Oh, yeah, Anyways, tough. Clemson, and then I think uh, DJ will take mm -hmm. a step forward, which won't be hard after his awful performance last year. The offense is the big question, but, yep, Clemson. Katie stats. Um, well, Kansas and Kansas State and Tennessee are also on my list, but to switch it up, I will also do NC State. I know that Brandon's like, well, when they have um, hype around them, they'll fail. But you know what? I still think it looks good on paper, and as a UNC fan, I hate every little bit about it. Oh, oh that was no. another one of your lists. You stole. No, I know it's not on my list. It's not on my list. Why are you sighing like that? I just I don't know if I can. Uh, their 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 preseason ranked pretty high. Let her have Compared it. to last year, I mean, so is fair Clemson. enough. They like, take a step forward. She's right. They take a step Clemson's forward. Clemson's ranked pretty high. He's right. Yep, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. Thank you. Let her right. let her lift. She's right. You're right. You're right. Thank okay? you. Okay. I also had Clemson Listen, on my list. I'm not only the funniest person at Barstool. Oh, Jesus. I'm also yes. the most understanding guy at Barstool. So I, I, and you know what? And you know what? You know what? You're showing that more too because people are noticing. I tell yeah. my parents that all the time. How understanding you are. I appreciate people <laughs> around me. Yes, it's it's very. Um, speaking of, your but parents, not enough I, not I to start another some, podcast. I got some extra Yukon stuff. I'll send it to them. What? I love how you just lied to us and said it was sent to you, which simply was. That was funny though. If they did put, no, don't rip it. I'm not. Oh. Dear Brandon. It says unnecessary roughness. I can see through the paper. <laughs> it does say dear unnecessary roughness. I mean, just straight up dear unnecessary Yukon roughness. Yukon equipment staff. Shout out Yukon equipment Shout staff. Shout out Yukon equipment staff because we got a bag of stuff. And they are nice. Like, I mean, these are just. They're, like, just, they're nice, listen, especially listen, during the fall. And I don't, oh, yeah. I don't want to be one of these guys, but uh, if you are an equipment guy, at any school across the country, I swear to God, I'll wear your stuff. Yeah, yep. We're all merch whores. I, yep. Hold on, i got to talk to one specifically because I had a disaster happen. Uh-oh. Yeah, Texas Tech or Mississippi State? Texas Tech Ooh, equipment right. staff. You sent, for the Dugs oh. thing a couple of years ago, you, you, sent a pair, you sent a bunch of stuff. And I got a pair of Under Armour shorts that were kind of matte black. 
I had a Texas Tech logo on the bottom I and under, and I wear them all the time. And I think I left them at the hotel last week. I lost my <gasps> you shorts. Love those. Those, those are, are my uniform. favorite shorts ever. I love them. I don't know why Under Armour shorts. So if you're an equipment manager at an Under Armour school across this country, or if you're at Texas Tech, please let your equipment guys know that I need those black match shorts with the logo. I need them bad. I need them in, in 2X. I need them. I need them in my life. They're uh, the most important thing. You wear those all the time. You're all really the time. Free promo. For what? For like, if you're I'll wearing give you them. anything, I'll give you anything. Yes, I uh, I will. Guns up. That's wreck Texas em. Tech, right? Yeah, Reckham, Reckham Tech. I thought that was Georgia Tech. No, Reckham is Texas Tech. Yeah. I thought Red they were Raiders. guns up. But they both. Oh. Uh, I I will wear pretty much any merch. Except well, there's a few. Ex- except you wouldn't wear the Mike Leach merch I, I created one time, and you wouldn't help me sell. No, it. because I wasn't going to help you sell. Why it wouldn't before. you help me sell? I would. I would help you sell it after we played each other. I'm not going to. I was still mad about that. I know. Uh, Trust that, me, I know. Uh, I I can. There's only. I can count on one hand. I wouldn't wear anything. Wasn't I wouldn't. that not made by the Barstool store? No, it uh, wasn't. Yeah. There was I, a whole thing. It was no, a whole no, thing. no, no, no. That was Barstool stuff. That was Barstool stuff. I thought it was that that little no, that shop was, that you made. No, that was Barstool stuff. There, they, it was like two I weeks before. Snitching. It was like two weeks before we played. I each would other. wear an A and M shirt right now. I'd wear an A and M shirt the Friday not, before the game if you to want to me to sell it. To help you sell it, yeah, not to no, sell it for me. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. You well, are not. I'm you the can most. Do it for sure. Not only am I the most understanding and funniest guy here, I'm also the most helpful. Well, that's just simply not true. Oh, Mike, how many Mark how, Stoops uh, and John Calipari are beefing on the timeline? About what? What? Well, apparently Calipari, um, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, said this is a basketball school, Alabama's a football school, so it's Georgia, no disrespect to our football team. Um, I hope they win 10 games and go to bowls, but this is a basketball school. Oh, oh fair. And then Stoops quote to the basketball school, question mark, I thought we competed in the SEC. Then hashtag four okay. straight postseason wins. Also, well, Stoops has to put up on for his program. Yeah. Also, uh, John. This is just me to you talking. I know you think you're a great coach, and Kentucky fans think you're a great coach. If you're that big of a basketball school, maybe stop losing to St. Peter's in the first fucking round. You choker every single year. Uh, the reason your football program has grown is because you have fallen short of expectations many, many, many uh, years. You're in an MBA school. Yeah. yeah. You know who beat St. Peter's? Uh, uh, just relax. You beat a team from Jersey UNC. City. UNC. Yeah, UNC. But, um, who beat just, UNC? Well, before we get off the merch war thing, champions. is there any merch other than Ole Miss you wouldn't wear? No, I would wear anything. Ole Miss is the only school you wouldn't wear. I would wear. not wear Ole That's Miss. That's fair. Um, That's Iowa. definitely fair. Iowa. Would you wear Iowa if they sent it? What yeah. br- are I they? Think, we, we, I think as a you know, there's humor to be found. We have in a the charity Elwood. shirt for Kinnick. I want to have you potentially wear it. Uh, we, but don't don't, don't just force it. No, 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 no. I'm talking about from the football program. Would you wear an Iowa football hoodie if they sent it? Yeah. Okay. No, it's for the it's kids. It's bullshit tradition. Something. And, and they act like Some they, things. Yeah, yeah. They, and it, it's one thing. It is a nice tradition. Yeah. It's nice that they do it. But my Some God, things. they beat you over the head with it. Look how nice I mean, we are. Look how awesome we are. They got Katie. Propaganda. It's well, unbelievable. It's, it's, it's oh, we're just the, the propaganda wing for Iowa. For the kids. Yeah. Remember, Brandon hates can- Brandon likes cancer. He, he does. Cancer. You don't want to get It's established from Clemson fans. Jack, you kids cancer. You don't. Oh, I forgot about. He loves breast cancer. Yeah. That's my favorite. Not boobs. Breast cancer. Okay, another three up, three down. Um, I've given this one away a lot. This has been my favorite pick of the year. I just love them. Uh, in a, in a, it's a quarterback sport. And in the Big Ten, I don't think there's a lot of great quarterbacks. Maryland has one. I think Talia is mm. a very good quarterback. Maryland is – their over-under is five and a half. I think they might win nine. Like, I think they might beat Michigan State. They need a defense. I think Maryland – they do need a defense. They need a defense. But he's recruited at a high level. It's time for that to start showing up. They're at five and a half. I, I, I've said that already, Katie. I was confirming. Okay. Because you said I think. Uh, Maryland, to me, I got Kansas State and Maryland. Those teams are performing far above expectations. I think Maryland could win eight or nine games. People love to point to a couple of games from him last year. and The he, Iowa game. He's yes, threw five interceptions. And, right. And, but when you look, I think he had, what, nine total interceptions? No, he had five interceptions against Iowa, 11 overall. So right. So in his other 11 games, he threw six interceptions. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you when, yes, he had a shit game. That happens. We're not saying he's like fucking elite. However, he is a good quarterback. Uh, this one, I'm not even going to explain it because everybody knows my stance on this. USC. Jack. Minnesota. Minnesota. Veteran quarterback. Veteran quarterback. Last year they turned it on after losing to the likes of Bowling Green. I kind of got a problem with the preseason media's at, uh, Big, all Big Ten team. The two preseason all Big Ten running backs are Travion Henderson, which he should be, and Blake Corum. Mo Ibrahim, if he is healthy, 
might be the best running back in the country. Yeah, the only thing I would say is Achilles injuries, it's still to this day. You can return to them, unlike before, but they still – he was really explosive. Not the most explosive running I back, think I'd, but – I'd take 80% of him over Blake Corum. Like, Blake Corum's fine, but that guy's really Mo Ibrahim though. is back. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't love P.J. Fleck, but I think he's decent, and I think Minnesota has a chance. Looking at their schedule, man – I mean, I just had it up. Well, somebody's going to break through in that Big Ten West. The Big Ten West is topsy-turvy this year. Uh, There's not an elite team. Uh, There's five teams that can win it, in my opinion, including my next team. Who That Minnesota-Michigan State game on September 24th, that's week four. That's going to be a big one. Michigan State has a sneaky uh, hard schedule. Hard schedule, and yeah. they're going to show up in a minute for mm-hmm. me. Katie Stats. Minnesota also they're bringing about the OC Kirk. I can't pronounce it right. Mm-hmm. Sirach, so blah, blah, blah. I say one for the 2019 team that had that Minnesota with sure. Tanner Morgan. Um, Tanner Morgan, what a guy. Yeah, still in football. I'm going to go with Nebraska. Um, three and nine last year, best three and nine team in the history of college football. Yep, yeah, I think I like Casey Thompson a lot. Also, yeah, so eight eight of their losses were by eight points or less. Yeah, no, so they think, were they were that close. Yeah, I mean it's also it's a low bar, so I feel like it's an easy in that aspect. But Casey Thompson also got fucked, I think. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no, he was good. He was yeah. fine, and and like he he his numbers were good, and he just got you know. But that's what the transfer portal giveth and mm-hmm. it taketh, and sometimes it'll take your job from you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but I think he'll be very good because he that's a that's a good landing spot for him. Um, all right, let's go with uh, last one, last team. Mine is also in the Big Ten West. He chose Minnesota. So I think Nebraska can win the Big Ten West. Oh, mm. I guess we're going three Big Ten West teams. Oh, right? this is an interesting one you're about to say. Um, so I think Nebraska can win it. I think Minnesota can win it. I think Wisconsin can win it. I think yep. Iowa can win it. But I already said it's a quarterback game, right? The best quarterback in the Big Ten, not named C.J. Stroud, plays in West Lafayette, Indiana. His name is Aiden O'Connell. Mm. If you look at his last five games last year, it was stupid. It was stupid. Tom Brady numbers. It was you're talking about 450 yards a game, like four touchdowns a game. It was incredible. Aiden O'Connell is the second best quarterback, and if C.J. Stroud didn't exist, he'd be far and away the best quarterback in the Big Ten. But he does. Purdue is one of those teams. They open the season. You'll know. You'll know if this team's going to hit immediately because they open with Penn State. That is such a giant game that nobody talks about. Penn State, Purdue. If Penn State loses, mm-hmm. I think James Franklin's on the hot seat in the in the very first part of the season. If Purdue wins, they set themselves up for a huge glory down the road. I like Purdue to perform above their station and win seven, eight, maybe nine games. My third three up is the Miami Hurricanes, which I know you've also said as well. Uh, you talk about quarterbacks. I love Tyler Van Dyke. I know a lot. Of, we haven't seen his full potential. I think he's one of the most interesting quarterbacks in the country. Miami has been down as compared to what they're used to. Uh, I, I think Mario Cristobal is a great hire for them. Also, just the the swagger around them this year. You know, they just had that huge locker room, which I know to fans it's like and eh, whatever to players like having the rock and having all that stuff being unveiled like there's something about this team this year that feels like they're going to take that next step up obviously they had high expectations last year they did not meet i think they will meet those expectations and we will see very quickly week three uh when they travel to texas to play a top 10 team but i do think that they are are going to be much better than well they, they have traveled to texas to play texas a&m top 10 team yeah yeah but i want to make sure you said that well no no like, i just said a top 10 team i correct i mean so it sounded like you were saying that but i do think that miami it's only one top 10 team in texas right for now, now. Yeah. It's, yeah it's i mean there's only one for now so they are going to texas to play the top 10 team for in, now. in and the only state one, of texas who knows by week three that only is one true. nationally well, ranked number one i guess it does depend on what happens in week two also where's baylor ranked they got to be like oh they're ten, yeah. which I think right. is com- right. Like they're so they're coming count. up. Waco doesn't count, but Miami. <laughs> That's a top ten team. In Texas. Waco doesn't count. <laughs> um, but in the ACC, I because I agree with Jack. I did in, in my original list that I didn't use. I only use one on there. Jack, I did put Clemson too, just because I do think that even though they won ten games, whatever. But I think in the ACC again, there is just a glaring opening. NC State's up there. I think Miami could take that leap. I agree, Jack. Louisville is my third team. Uh, They were a team that had the classic looked really bad in week one on a national TV scale, and we thought they stunk against against Ole Miss. Miss. Lane Kiffin wasn't there because he had COVID. Everyone was like, oh, my God, this Louisville team stinks. Everyone thought Malik Cunningham stunk. It turns out he's phenomenal, and I think they bring back a decent amount on offense and defense. Malik Cunningham brings back four of his five offensive linemen. He's going to run for 1,000 yards, potentially pass for 3,000 yards. I think this Louisville team's very good. They do have a decently tough schedule. Like, you know, they do have to go to Kentucky to play Kentucky. I think they have to play Clemson at Clemson. So I don't know if they're going to go 
10 and 2, 12 and 0, but I think they could get to that 10 and 2 mark. Malik Cunningham, I'm expecting a big season mm-hmm. from potentially a dark horse in the Heisman in the Heisman race, but we'll see. Louisville, my third team like on the it. rise this year. Katie Stats. I hate not to add another team to this, but I feel so strongly about it. I'm going to have to double down, but Kansas State, um, I've been on them for a bit. I just think they have the pieces. And as much as Adrian Martinez was not good in Nebraska, I think it was just like a good time for both of them to get new starts. And also just Deuce Vaughn is insane. All right, three up. It was, for me, it was Kansas State, Maryland, and Purdue. For me, it was Tennessee, USC, Miami. For Jack, it was Louisville, Clemson, and your third team. Minnesota. And Minnesota. Minnesota. And for Katie, it was NC State, Kansas State, Nebraska. Nebraska. And Nebraska. There's your top there's your three up. Now, for every uh every every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's uh I believe that's uh, the law. Physics. Yeah. I think that's called Murphy's Law. I don't know. Or Newton. Yeah. I haven't been yeah. in high school in a while. Uh okay, so um Three down. Three down. What must go up? Wait, uh, what goes up must come down. Correct. Yes. All right, so three down. Three teams that will perform below their expectations. Okay. I will also start us off here, and I will uh, – I feel like I'm banging the drum, and I've said it probably too much, and I'm sure people are tired of it. Kentucky Wildcats will come in below expectations this year. They are expected to challenge for that number two spot in the East, but it is contingent on their quarterback being what people want him to be and not what he actually is. Uh, Will Levis is uh, looks like a great quarterback, sounds like a great quarterback. The idea of him is great, but he led the SEC in interceptions despite being sixth in attempts. He threw for a 175-yard average in SEC play. He only threw for over 200 yards once in SEC play. He's just not in a, in a league with Hendon Hooker, in a league with Anthony mm-hmm. Richardson, in a league with uh, Stetson Bennett. I don't think you're finishing second in the East, Spencer Rattlers. You're not finishing second in the East with Will Levis. I'm sorry. He looks like a first-round pick. I just don't think he is. I think Kentucky has benefited from a down east. Tennessee's coming back. Florida's coming back. South Carolina's coming back. I think that's going to really hurt Kentucky. I got Kentucky uh, going 7-5, and five, maybe 6-6. Six and six. And when we talk about expectations being as high, I'm not saying this team is going to stink by any stretch of the imagination, but they have very high expectations. We just mentioned top 10 expectations. I think Baylor, the Baylor Bears. No, you took it. We'll take a step down this year. I like Dave Aranda a lot. I think he's a great coach. Obviously exceeded expectations last year. Blake Shapin, a very good quarterback. However, when you win the Big 12 and you have that high of a of a ceiling, or not, what am I looking for? You set that high of a bar? Set bar. That's what I was looking for. Have, when you set that high of a bar, I do think that you will fall down, especially when you look at Oklahoma, Kansas State, Texas, all of those teams. I mean, Oklahoma obviously was there anyways. They, they'll stay good despite all their issues right now, but Kansas State's going to be better. Texas is going to be better. I think Oklahoma State will be better. Baylor will not reach their expectations as a top 10 team by the end of the season. Jack, Mike. Uh, well, uh, Baylor's my first team. Just to go off of Casey, they return uh, 49% of their production. Mm-hmm. That ranks 12th worst in the country. They don't have a very talented roster, even for mm-hmm. Big 12 standards. Nice. I think they're go- they're going to take a serious step back. Nothing like their program will be fine. Dave Aranda will be fine. Right. I bet they'll be really good next year. But this year is going to be a step back. They lost too much. They don't have ta- a lot of talent, at least on paper, replacing it. This is a uh, expectations. I could be wrong, but based on what I what I believe, they're taking a step back. Katie Stats. Iowa State. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, that's a good one. I think losing Brees Hall, Brock Purdy is going to be huge. Um, they also return. They only have eight returning start- starters, which is the fewest in the Big 12. And I, just, like, I, I know people are high on Hunter Deckers. And yes, and I think mm-hmm. Jack brought this up a few episodes ago. And people were like, oh, they trained behind this quarterback for so many years. Gonna step. No, like Being on the field is just not the same thing. But I think there's, just, there's too many other options ahead of them in the Big 12. For my second round, I'm going to risk uh, doing what exactly just happened to Jack, uh, but I'm going to risk it happening again because this is a team he feuds with a lot. I think the Michigan State Spartans will be hard-pressed to to match what they did last year. I know Tuck coming. I know you <laughs> did it last year. I know yada, yada, yada. But listen, a lot of what happened last year is hard to repeat. And I know I'm ignoring to, – to say Michigan State's not going to be as good, you got to ignore that Peyton Thorne's a really good quarterback. And mm-hmm. Jarek Broussard's probably going to be 
uh, a pretty good version of Kenneth Walker. But can he be exactly what Kenneth Walker was? Uh, that's once in a lifetime. Um, the defensive issues in the back end, there's been some transfers, but I'm not convinced they're uh, they're fixed. Uh, and you're playing in a division with, you know, Michigan's got good quarterback play, good offense. Ohio State's got great quarterback play. Penn State exists. They have a quarterback who's been playing since 2001. Um, <laughs> you've got Tolly over there. I think Michigan State and their schedule, sneaky, sneaky mm-hmm. tough. Uh, they got to go to Washington. They got to go to uh, to Maryland. Uh, they got to go to Ann Arbor. Like, and they got Ohio State at home. Doesn't matter where you play Ohio State, they're going to kill you. So I, I just I just think Michigan State expects to be in that nine ten win range again. And I got them. Thank you very much. It's starting to there's some water catch up. I'm d- yeah. Um, there it is. Uh, they expect to be in that nine ten win range, and I see them more in the six seven or eight yep. win range. I'm I going. Think seven and I, five I have my this on my list as well. So it looks like we might have just the three of us. Michigan State is, and again, when you talk about being down, quote, it's because of what the expectations are. Michigan made the college football playoff last year, and what do we always hear? But Michigan State beat them. But Michigan State beat them. I do think that they are going to be fine. Peyton Thorne put up a lot of numbers when we talked about the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten. We said he will have to put even more on his shoulders without Kenneth Walker. However, I think being in the top ten and being the team that beat a college football playoff team will not be Michigan State this year. Paying Tuck come in $90 million last year. All the expectations coming in this season, I do not think that they will meet them. Mine, my next one up is Oklahoma State, very similar to the Baylor. They are. They, Jack hated the Big 12 championship game last year. Yeah. Hated. It was, also, he, it was a great game. And great colors, too. It was a great color matchup. Anyways, colors, colors look great at Jerry World. Something about those lights. Great yeah, lights, yeah, Jerry. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Oklahoma State, uh, I love Oklahoma State as a school, their fans. But. This year, bottom 30 team in returning production, specifically on defense. And that doesn't even account for the fact you lost the best defensive coordinator in the game last year, according uh, to the award. I forget what the award's called. Frank Boyles. Frank Boyles award. Jim Knowles over at Ohio Ohio State. Oklahoma State was, I mean, inches away from going to the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. I think this year you may see them drop back to that 9-3, 8-4 range, which isn't bad. But it will be a a season where they won't be awful. But I think they're definitely taking a step back. I don't see them at the top of the Big 12 this year. They're a team to me that's like they'll fuck something up for somebody, but they're not going to yeah, beat that somebody. Like they may beat Oklahoma, who knows? But right, like they're good enough to fuck some shit up. But I don't think that they will be in the college football playoff. Talk. The only thing that worries me about that is is in, in a conference with not a lot of continuity at quarterback. Mm. They do have Spencer Sanders, who's been there for a hot minute. But and, and he really did turn it on. I was yeah. a doubter of him late going going into the season last year, and he really turned it on. Mm. Katie Stats. This is a perfect segue. Um, mine is Auburn, who wears. Whoa, they were six and six last year. Tur list. Oh, well, the Derek Mason. Um, I think that just as the as Brandon says, the cheese is gonna fall off the cracker. There's so much off the field drama. Lost 20 players to transfer portal. Lost Derek Mason, the OC. DC. And the OC. Oh, and I'm Derek sorry, Mason, I'm, I comma and the OC. Sorry, I apologize. I just, make it to, more clear. Also, if you're like TJ Finley. Is your guy? Uh, I'm sorry. Is he going to be out of jail? Oh, he's already been released. Okay, good. So yes. Yes, no. unless he goes back. I wonder what a player at Auburn has to do to really go to jail. I, I mean, mean, it has to be like seven or eight murders. Like I think the first three or four wouldn't. Or nice trees. Nice yeah. Smith is out after guns, drugs, and DWI. Oh, that's right. Running a felonious program over there in College Station. Also, uh, we forget Please. Chris Rodriguez at Kentucky. Their star running back had a. They're deep at running back though. I think they are anyway. Um, all right, my last one. I went on the record. I think Auburn's going to be okay this year. I, I go back and forth, man. I the, the SEC West is weird. There's no bad team. Somebody, but somebody's going to have a bad record. They got some talent on that team. Every, somebody's going to be bad. The problem is everybody in the West, like who I know, in the West isn't talented. I know. You're yeah, right. Somebody's finishing four and eight. Who's who could go to another division and be really good? Um, yeah, like I will be shocked if Brian Harson is there next year. Right, and, and they also have this this. They have something. It's a lot like Penn State. If they lose that first game, he's on the hot seat, changes their season. Harson could lead a turnaround, or he could be gone by October 1st. Yeah. Like, if he loses a home to Penn State or if he loses a couple games early, mm-hmm. he could be gone early. Because they, they already have, so they like, do, this they thing They go for Penn him. State, Mizzou, yeah, they could, both at home. If he loses both of them, he's out. They could, they could fire him quick. Yeah, because they, they you already saw in the offseason that they were kind of looking they for a reason. To, him, right, yeah. they, they're looking for a reason to be pissed at him. Oh, I so. think she left Auburn. Did we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. I told you. I told yeah. y'all. That. Oh yeah, that was. Yeah. I got another. Uh, that was. I don't know what we posted on social media, but I'm I'm a bad woman for posting that right. on. I didn't. Nine minutes. Nine my, minutes. My, my my first 
thought when I saw that was like Brian Harson is so fucked. When I thought TJ was arrested. All right, my last uh, my last one to lead off the last round. A team that came out of nowhere last year produced a first round pick, uh, but did it in such a fashion that even their coach was mad that their offensive coordinator <laughs> uh, passed the ball so many times and had so much success. Mm -hmm. If your coach is mad that you're scoring points and getting yards, I'm not sure your coach is built for this for the long haul to do it again. Uh, and they bring in a conservative offensive coordinator. The old offensive coordinator has gone to Nebraska. Your quarterback, Kenny Pickett, was a first-round pick. I just don't think Keaton Slovis is that guy. You lost your big-time receiver. Bring back a lot. Bring back the entire offensive line, entire defensive line. But a lot of their wins last year were based on winning at the skill positions and, and winning shootouts. I don't see it again with Pitt. I, like, I think they might start one and two. I think JT Daniels might get them week one. I think Tennessee might get them in week three. Uh, I really think Pitt is more of an eight and four, seven and five team this year and not the 10 and two, not the highly ranked team that people see. I think Pitt is my third team. All time, just coaches throwing people under the bus. It was I weird. Mean, it throwing just, people under the bus for being awesome. Right. It just, I mean, literally, just what, what are you talking about? Um, this one is, again, and I'm not just saying this because of off the heels of the last episode and what we've seen this week. I mean, Notre Dame, if you are ranked fifth in the country right now, and it's everything that we've said, and Brandon, I have to hand this to you because I've been down on Notre Dame since we've done this podcast, and I know that I've been wrong sometimes and right others. You've been very high on Notre Dame, and all of a sudden you're like the biggest Notre Dame hater. You're ranked number five in the country. You have a new coach, a new quarterback. Go down the list, and yes, the defense is going to be really good, but expectations of being fifth in the country and being in that conversation and being in the college football playoff, I just don't see happening this year. It's also the toughest schedule Notre Dame's played in years. It's, and, it's a ridiculously tough schedule. And Notre Dame fans think that like you're saying that they're going to suck, they're not going to make they're a bowl game. Suck. They're not at all. But being fifth in the country, I mean, that is a yeah. very high bar with a lot of new things And happening. I'm not a Notre Dame hater all of a sudden. I just think Notre Dame's going to go 8-4 and four or 9-3 and because that schedule is nasty. I know you're not, but according yeah. to... I mean, they play yeah. Ohio State and Clemson. Fuck. And USC is good. And USC at the end, by, by the time US, and by the time they play USC, USC is going to be like operating at max potential. All right, um, Jack. So this is a tough one, but because they went five and seven last year, but I think Rutgers has a chance to go like two and ten this year. Um, they have a really tough schedule. They open with Boston College. If they lose that, you could see them at two and five. Like, I think there's a there's a there's a possibility, and it's on on paper they could go two and ten this year. I really think that. That would be a huge uh, setback for the Greg Schiano yes, or the I think yeah, Schiano rebuild. I think they could lose to Iowa, Ohio State, Nebraska, Minnesota, Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, Maryland, and oh, then say it like that, yeah. And then the only really winnable games are Indiana, and then Temple, Wagner, and then Boston College, I guess. But I think they could even lose Indiana. I think we're kind of yeah. low on Indiana, and they're a team that. They're gonna have a dead cat bounce from last year that they yeah. were so bad they're gonna get their like resort to that five and seven. Yeah. And I don't think Rutgers is very good, I, and I think they're gonna resort back. And I'll, by the way, Big Ten awful decision bringing them into the uh, uh, the Big Ten. Massive mistake. You could have had a great team up in Connecticut. Katie Stats. I pointed this out earlier to Casey when you were talking, but my last team is Purdue. Okay. I think they have to replace <laughs> way too much. They do. They do That's, have to replace a lot. Yes, I I, I love it. Aiden O'Connell's the only like reason I had to kind of like, think about this. But besides that, like they lost their tight end, they lost they lost their top I think two or three receivers. No, they bring back special. their tight end. George Karloftis. No, that's the defensive end. Excuse me, sorry. It's all right. The E. Um, I think that it, it's just there's too there's too many question marks for me for Purdue. They do bring they don't bring back a lot. They I'm just banking on the quarterback in a in a conference where I think quarterback play is going to be put at a premium because they're in the Big Ten West. Uh, can I out-quarterback Graham Mertz? Yeah. Can I out-quarterback Tanner Morgan? I think so. Can I out-quarterback you know, certain other? If I get killed at other positions, I might be, that theory might be way wrong. So, hey, week eight. I don't mind that Purdue one. I'm going to, to Madison, Wisconsin in week eight for Purdue at, at you know, Wisconsin. You're, you're we'll not see. actually going. Well, we'll see. You're not actually well, no, going. Well, no, I know where I'll be it's week eight real. and it won't be there. It's not real. It wasn't uh, a real thing. Well, maybe it was. i got to get out of here. Uh, so, it is, uh, that's fun. Next we week, make, let's, we need to start really breaking down and like previewing conferences and the yes. records and all. Okay, well, do we want to do what I think we should do next week? We got to do it. Or should we not? If I say it now, we'll have to do it. We have to do it at some point. We're running out of time. Well, we can't do it the week before the game starts. Right. So if we're going to do it, we have to do it. Maybe combine it with the week Ladies zero. Ladies and gentlemen. Week zero. Do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it.
when we join you next, it will be hate week. Finally, it's hate week. Boy, hate I've week. been wanting to hate. Hate week 2022. Just a few months late. Is upon us. Usually it's the last week of May. My dad died. I know. That's why I'm saying it. I hated that. You did hate that. It, it is a hateable offense for your dad to die. <sighs> All right. Yeah. Hate week. We hated it too. Is upon us. We'll be back Monday. <laughs>